Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com. Today we're at the Heart Valve Summit in Chicago, Illinois, and we're talking with Dr. Mark Russo, who is an attending cardiac surgeon and co-director for the Center of Aortic Disease at Barnabas Health System. And we're, today we're gonna to talk about a condition known as pump head. My first question to Dr. Russo is, is this an actual complication? or is this a perceived complication from the patient's perspective? So pump head, it's also known as post-perfusion syndrome. It's not a specific complication or condition. It's a, it's a constellation of, of conditions the patient might experience uh, after surgery and uh, after any type of cardiovascular surgery. And that includes uh, dizziness, uh, changes in vision, uh, uh, diminished uh, long-term memory, uh, and the most significant one is, is an actual stroke. So it is, it is, there are real conditions that the, that the patients experience, it's not just their perception. Yeah, and as, as a patient, if you're doing a research on this, the heart lung machine comes up as a potential suspect for pump head. Is that, is that accurate? So it's a, very controversial as to what extent the, the heart lung machine contributes to that. Uh, early on, uh, there seemed to be a mounting evidence suggesting that cardiopulmonary bypass or the heart lung machine uh, was contributory. Uh, and it, that may in fact be the case uh, to some degree, but uh, there's an increasing amount of evidence to suggest that this is just a, really a progression of the cardiovascular disease that, that the patients uh, the, the patients who require heart surgery, patients with coronary artery disease or valvular disease or aortic disease experience, it's all part of the same uh, disease process. Uh, it's, the, it's also possible, and, and I think that this is generally accepted among surgeons, that, that the heart lung machine that we use is bet, today is better than the one that we used 10 years ago, for example. So I think that that might explain partially the differences in findings between earlier studies and the more recent studies. Got it. And just so that everybody in the community knows your specialty and your clinical interest here, how long have you been researching this topic? So I've been interested in looking at patient outcomes for about 15 years. My, the focus of my research is trying to find ways to, uh, to maximize uh, patients' outcomes after cardiovascular surgery. Uh, it's become clear that patients view neurological complications almost as adversely as they do death. Uh, and that's not a surprise. And patients, you know, they want to do well. They want to be functional after they undergo these, you know, highly invasive procedures. And and so over the last five years, uh, I've really become interested in, in trying to define one what the causes of neurological complications are, and two how we can how we can improve upon our outcomes. Got it. And given these complications, I guess the patients might be wondering, what is it that you, as a surgeon, will do during the, during the operation to protect the brain yeah. from complications? So there are some very simple things that we do. It's, uh, things as straightforward as a baby aspirin is clearly protective against neurological complications after cardiac surgery. Uh, there's an increasing amount of evidence suggesting that, that statins, which is a drug, uh, the, the trade name is Lipitor, which uh, a lot of patients who, uh, who undergo cardiac surgery are on preoperatively, that there seems to be a protective effect related to those, uh, those drugs. Other things that we do in the operating room is when we, we cool the patient's core temperature down, that is we, we induce hypothermia because we know well that, that that also is protective against neurologic complications. Uh, also, we just try to be meticulous to make sure that, uh, that no debris or calcium uh, is allowed to shower to the brain because we know that that's one of the mechanisms with which neurologic complications occur. One of the more advanced techniques that we use at our center quite frequently is called anti-grade cerebral perfusion. Uh, traditionally, Complex cardiac surgery sometimes required that we stop blood flow to the brain, but I think that over time we've re recognized that 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 has deleterious effects, and so we we try to avoid that at all costs. So uh, at our center again, we use integrated cerebral perfusion, which would mean that we would get access to the subclavian artery here or the carotid arteries in the neck, and make sure that we have continuous blood flow to the brain at all times to make sure that the metabolic demands of the, the, the brain are met and therefore decrease the risk of, of neurological complications. Guys, so I guess one of the questions, if I'm a patient out there, you just shared some great clinical information, some of your research. Is there anything else you think a patient should know about pump head as they're getting ready for a procedure like heart valve surgery? Well, I think that patients need to recognize that um, neurologic complications uh, do occur, um, and some, frankly, are unavoidable, but, but there's clearly strategies that we can use to, to minimize those risks, because 
as, as surgeons, we, we, we recognize that a neurologic complication is almost as devastating as death, or mm. in some cases, maybe as devastating as death. And that's something that we really need to focus on as a, as a cardiac surgery community. And I think people, people are doing that. And I think that we've made great advances. So I, I think that th these are real things that the patients may experience, but I do think that we're getting better at protecting the patients against them. And I think that we can continue to improve upon the outcomes that we have. Great. Well, Dr. Russo, thanks for taking the time today to meet with us and discuss this topic. On behalf of a lot of patients out there that I know have come to, come to you for successful surgery, I want to thank you on their behalf. And again, just thanks for all thank the work that much. you're doing. Really appreciate it. Thank you.